One of the questions I always like to pose to my classes when we talk about exploration is why is it that Europe goes out exploring? Why not China? Why not the Arabs? All of which had much more technology and advancements leading up to this time period than Europe did. So this video will answer this question. Why Europe? Well, one reason why Europe will be the ones to explore is because of the Crusades. The Crusades bring a lot of cultural diffusion and reintroduces ideas and goods to Europe that they had forgotten about. It brings knowledge about things going on in other places in the world and opens their eyes to the luxury goods they have been missing out on. The Mongols also influenced European exploration. They reopened and strengthened trade, making it possible for Europeans to receive more long-distance trade products. After this exposure, the demand for luxury goods increases, and when the Mongols fall, they need to figure out a new way to get their supply. Another incentive is that spices make food taste better. Europe doesn't have any natural spices they can use, so they had to rely on Asian spices to make their food taste more edible. The problem is, though, you can't directly mail order things from China. These spices have to go through the territory now controlled by the Ottoman Empire, and the Arab merchants facilitating this trade are charging a lot of money for these products. Europe has many trade disadvantages going into this long-distance trade exchange. The first, and the, one of the largest issues for them, is that they do not have many items that other places want. The only thing that China and these Arab merchants want from them is their supply of gold and silver. This will lead to a huge drain of wealth for Europe, as China and the East receive large influxes of gold and silver. The second major disadvantage the Europeans will experience is their poor geographical location. Not only are they far away from the East, but there's no direct routes to China without having to go through Arab-dominated territory. These Islamic empires controlling the region would require taxes on non-Arab merchants that came through. So even if you did decide to go all the way to the East to get your goods, you still ended up paying the Arabs a large amount of money. The third disadvantage is Europe's lack of technology. Even though they wanted to find a way to get around the Arabs, they did not have the technology to do so. Ships had never traveled that far before and were not built to last for such long distance journeys, nor did the Europeans have the navigational equipment needed for such journeys. This will all change in the 15th century as new technology will be introduced to Europe that allows them to begin to engage in long distance trade. The first major change is the fact that better ships will be developed. These deep draft ships were capable of carrying heavy loads on the Atlantic Ocean without sinking the ships. They also will adopt the airtight compartments invented by the Chinese that prevented leakage on the ship from affecting other areas. The second advancement is that they finally figure out that magnetic compass. It only took the Arabs taking the ideas from the Chinese and then giving it to the Europeans for them to finally catch on to what the Chinese had known about for the last 300 years. So congratulations, Europe! The third advancement, though it doesn't sound like it is crazy innovative, is enhanced map making. As the Renaissance brought in increased questioning and scientific reasoning, maps will become a priority for scholars. They will become more accurate and use a more standard system of global positioning. So now, the systems of measurement they use in France will also be the ones they use in Spain. The next two advancements are also brought from China, and that would be gunpowder and metalworking. They will be able to use gunpowder now to defend against attackers and make sea and road travel safer. They will also increase the amount of metalwork going on because now blacksmiths are needed to create more weapons. Thus, the first guns and cannons are introduced to Europe. Okay, so now we have set the stage for why this wasn't happening in Europe before and why they are able to do it now. The next big jump for European exploration really happens because of one man, Portugal's ruler, Prince Henry the Navigator. Prince Henry was very interested in sailing and naval technology. He even establishes a naval school in Portugal dedicated to the teaching of navigation, astronomy, and cartography. From 1419 until his death in 1460, Prince Henry sent expeditions down the west coast of Africa. 
The goal was to find new trade partners and hopefully find a way to cut through Africa and make it to India. This way, they could cut out the middleman from their trade deals. While the Portuguese traveled along the coast of Africa, they will take over specific port cities along the western coast. These trade post cities will be under Portuguese control, and that is where they will stop to refuel ships while traveling. This is also where the first instances of Europeans using African people as slaves will come from. Unfortunately for Henry the Navigator, it won't be until 27 years after he dies that the explorer Bartholomew Diaz will round the Cape of Good Hope in 1487. The Cape of Good Hope, in case you didn't know, is the southernmost part of Africa, where the arrow is on the map on the screen. Another Portuguese explorer, Vasco da Gama, will round the Cape of Good Hope in 1497, and then he will go even further and sail along the coast of East Africa, and he locates a path to India. The problem will be that when his ships get to India, he has to contend with Arab strongholds in the area. These Arab merchants will not allow trade with these Europeans because they understand that to allow direct trade with Europeans would be a great loss of money to their economy. After they are sent packing by the Arab traders, the Portuguese come back two years later with an armada of ships and win a crucial battle to gain access to Indian trade. This will be super important because now they are the only European country that has a direct route to India and they will control the European markets. The Portuguese are making a lot of money and the rest of Europe is not happy about it. The Portuguese success is what inspires Columbus to sail west to reach the Indies. He wants to find a new and shorter route to the east. Columbus himself is actually Italian but his offer to go exploring for the Italians was rejected by the king at the time. So Columbus goes over to Spain to ask King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella to finance his trip. Knowing the queen was extremely religious, he tells them in his pitch meeting that he received a vision from God that this mission would bring thousands of new converts to the Christian faith, and that this mission would not only bring him its wealth, but a spiritual fulfillment as well. Turns out, he would be right on both counts, since the Spanish benefit the most from exploration of the Americas, and when they get there, they forcibly convert all of the natives to Catholicism. Religious conversion was not the only reason they agreed to finance his trip. Ferdinand had just finished spending a lot of money trying to get all of the Moors, which are a Muslim group that lived in Spain, out of Spain. And he lost a lot of support from the people. He needed more money to maintain control of his country, and he saw an influx of trade as a great way to do that. So I know you know enough about Columbus's journey, and I don't need to spend too much time on that. He sails west trying to go around the globe and reach the east, and instead he reaches the Bahamas. And of course, he calls the people he meets there Indians because he believes that he has reached the Indies. The main motivators for future explorers, of course, will be the three G's, God, gold, and glory. We have reached the period of history where Europe starts fighting a lot with each other to make sure their specific country gets more land, more resources, and really is just the biggest and best. The Portuguese and the Spanish will be the biggest competitors in the early rounds of exploration. The Spanish and the Portuguese are really the only two places that have large enough fleets and the technology to begin exploring this new world right away. And they both happen to be sailing to many of the same areas, aka pretty much all of South America. There are many skirmishes and arguments that occur because of this early period between the two, because it's hard to tell who gets to what areas first and where those borders are. So. The Pope decides to step in. He doesn't want two of his highest grossing followers to go to war with each other. The Pope draws a line down a map of the world, well, the known world up to that point in time, and he says everything west of this line belongs to Spain, and everything east of this line belongs to Portugal. Of course, they don't know at that time that really wouldn't work out well for Portugal. But anyways, this treaty is known as the Treaty of Tordesillas, and it is the agreement that both places will follow, even though Portugal gets the short end of the stick. 
This concludes our episode on early exploration. Hopefully now you can answer the question, why Europe? Thanks for watching.